This channel has been known to trigger leftists and trolls alike. Proceed with extreme caution. You have been warned. Misinformed people. Yes. Robert and Irma Telemontes had both practiced Santeria for nearly three decades. They say they aren't cruel and they aren't criminals. They're just believers in a misunderstood religion. We had the animals, you know, in, in cages and, you know, inside the bags, but they weren't being abused. The Telemonteses say they were among about 30 people who were part of a ceremony for a new member. That involved blood sacrifices to santos, or saints, represented by rocks kept in containers. They cut the animals' jugulars and let them bleed out. We're not beating animals to death. We're not, we're not chopping off legs, you know, while they're still alive. You know, the only one that can complain about, uh, about cruelty to animals is, is a vegan because, you know, you know, we're killing animals. The group sacrificed a goat, three roosters, a pigeon, and some chickens, and had other animals ready. After ceremonies like this, the Talamantes has said they'd cut the sacrificed animals up to cook up and eat in a ceremonial meal. They say some of that was already happening. The mistake in their eyes wasn't the sacrifices. It was leaving the garage door open for the neighborhood to see. If you're a nudist, you don't go nuding in your front yard. Right? You keep it within your home. There were seven santos involved in the ceremony, but before deputies arrived, they were only part way through. So this ceremony still needs to be completed. We're going to complete the ceremony. We're going to complete it. What will you do differently? This Nothing. Nothing the same. I won't have the garage door open. <laughs> breaking news, nigga. Some breaking news. Bats don't care about your feelings. There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. Nigga, please. Oh, hell no. Fight the well, tragedy prevented. An Antioch man is in federal custody after lying while trying to buy a gun at Walmart, according to police. Now, right now, he is undergoing a mental evaluation after prosecutors found out that he researched ISIS propaganda and mass shootings online. Fox 17 News' Nikki Janowitz tonight with the story. I'm shocked by this. I'm really shocked. Kari Malik Whitehead in federal custody tonight after trying to buy a gun at the Laverne Walmart last month. The 26-year-old reportedly asked employees to see a semi-automatic rifle that could hold a lot of bullets. A big concern because Whitehead got committed late last year after family members told police he researched mass shootings in ISIS online, converted to Islam, and may be radicalized. Those living near his family's Antioch home had no idea. And I was thinking because he has this problem with his mental, he has probably violated something, but talking of ISIS, this is too big for me. Whitehead never got his hands on that gun. He was denied the sale following a background check. On Friday, the ATF arrested him for handing clerks a form saying he was never committed to a mental institution, a lie and a federal offense. It's good that they caught him, and uh, I would say that uh, the law enforcement did a good thing to, you know, follow up with him, and they were able to get him before he got a gun, because actually nobody knew what he was going to do with it. His family would not speak with Fox 17 News on camera, but says Whitehead is schizophrenic and very paranoid. And again, Whitehead is in federal custody tonight. If convicted, he faces up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Reporting live outside the ATF headquarters in Brentwood tonight, I'm Nikki Genowitz for Fox 17 News. Another accused of killing her two young sons is due in court later on today. She's facing murder charges in their deaths. Channel 2's Audrey Washington is live right now at the Fulton County Jail. Audrey, she's accused of showing the gruesome scene to the father on a video call. Fred, and the details coming out of this case are truly disturbing. Two young boys found dead, the mother accused of murder. Now the mother's family tells us she has a history of mental illness. The discovery was made late Friday night. That's when the mother, Lamora Williams, told police she left her kids in her southwest Atlanta apartment with a relative at around noon and returned home late in the evening to find the one and two-year-old dead. But police say that's not true. We're told Williams called two people that night, including the boy's father father says she video called him and showed him the gruesome scene. Brenda Williams is Lamora Williams' mother and says her daughter struggles with mental health issues. I just came from the jailhouse to let them know to put her in suicide watch because she's going to kill herself. When I seen my kid, how I seen my kid, that when I knew what was going on. 
This picture shows an oven being taken away from the apartment in the back of a truck. Police say the boys had burns on their bodies. We expect to learn new details about the case in court today. Meanwhile, the father told us his surviving son, a three-year-old, saw his mother allegedly kill his brothers. Now, Williams, again, is due here in court later on today. We will be inside court and we'll bring you all the details as we receive them. A Gwinnett County community is rattled tonight after home intruders shot and killed one of their neighbors in the middle of the afternoon. Police say two bright traffic or construction vests tied up a family of three inside of a home on Scholar Drive in Lawrenceville. As the husband was able to free himself, police say the robber shot him and drove off. They already had them tied up. All they had to do was get what they can him to get. I'm putting together details about this deadly shooting and also what neighbors say they heard after the gunfire for the Channel 2 Action News Night Beat at 11. Also developing here at 10 o'clock, reports a former Miami Dolphin has been charged after a troubling post on social media. Sports director Steve Shapiro is here with this. Steve? Former Dolphin Jonathan Martin of Bullygate fame was finally charged today in L.A. County for making criminal threats. There is a warrant out for Martin's arrest. It was a month ago Martin posted this picture on Instagram of a shotgun and the names of former classmates and teammates he presumably wanted to hurt. Two of them, Incognito and Pouncey, were former Dolphins. Martin left the Dolphins during the 2013 season, claiming he was bullied by teammates. Richie Incognito was suspended and never played for the Dolphins again. The Instagram post on February 23rd had a quote, When you're a bully victim and a coward, your options are suicide or revenge. The L.A. County police say Martin had a cache of weapons in his possession. He's been charged with making criminal threats and one count of possessing a loaded 12-gauge shotgun. Now I want to emergency. Please help. 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 Please Okay, do you know how many people are injured? I don't know. School. 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 No, I don't know. What is your emergency? I'm sorry. Okay, what's your emergency? 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 Okay, what's your where did you, can you hear where the shots are coming from? It was in the hallway. They were shooting into my classroom. They were shooting into your classroom? They were. Okay. Do you hear, you hear the, the shots, shots now? now? Well, we're in class 1214. What, what is, is it? it? A former Cherry Creek school security guard is headed to jail for sexually assaulting a 15-year-old student. Broderick Lundy appeared before a judge today. Nine months ago, investigator Kevin Vaughn was in the court as he learned his sentence. Kevin. Kim, Broderick Lundy was a security officer at Grandview High School. Today in an Arapahoe County courtroom, he apologized to his victim and her family. He and the girl had exchanged an estimated 16,000 text messages, some of them lewd, before a late night meeting last year. It was then that he and the girl had sexual contact in the backseat of Lundy's car a few blocks from the student's home. Lundy pleaded guilty to sexual assault and sexual exploitation, and today a judge sentenced him to a year in jail and eight years of intensely supervised probation. Afterward, Prosecutor Christopher Gallo said he believed the sentence was just, and he said pursuing the case was critical, pointing out that it involved a child and a person in a position of authority. 
It's the most important thing in the world to encourage children to know that they're safe, to know that they'll be listened to, to know that they won't be ridiculed, to know that they uh, won't be thought of as liars or things like that, uh, and to be made safe. Lundy will spend the rest of his life as a convicted felon and he'll have to register as a sex offender and undergo treatment. The judge gave him until tomorrow to report to the jail. Okay, and this sentence is, comes after a plea agreement, so how much time could he have faced? Kim, that agreement called for anywhere from one to two years behind bars. And going to the lower end of that, of that range, the judge pointed to the fact that Lundy has a strong family support system, that he has no criminal record, and that he had served in the military. Okay, and as you mentioned, he will be registered for the rest of his life as a sex offender. Okay, thank you. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Also, follow us on the usual media for more interesting information like this. Channel moderators are Jer Shacks and Michael Thomas. Thanks for your diligence and dedication. Fight their asses!